Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now today what I'm going to do is show you footage of the blast from Sunday, except this will be a different angle and closer up. We'll get to that in just a minute. Now one of the things I want to talk about is the fact that Russia does have the capabilities in the area to use these tactical nuclear weapons. Obviously we weren't there. I don't know if this was a tactical nuclear weapon, but it was a very large explosion and me being an artilleryman for a long time, I know what artillery looks like and that did not look like an artillery blast of any kind that I've ever seen in my years and years in the military. But here's what we got. We've got an article from Newsweek that says Russia has threatened nuclear attack. This coming from the Ukrainian Defense Minister. It says Kiev has received threats of nuclear retaliation from Russia through unofficial channels if it continues to fight pro-Russian separatists in eastern Ukraine. The Russian side has threatened on several occasions across unofficial channels that in the case of continued resistance, they are ready to use tactical nuclear weapons. And they have also said, or Putin has also come out and said, that if the U.S. sends weapons over into Ukraine, then he will be forced to use some kind of retaliation as well. Now, outside the U.S., both established and emerging, uh, emerging nuclear powers increasingly see nuclear weapons as weapons that can be used in a controlled, limited, and strategically useful fashion. This is coming from Barry Watson, analyst with the Center of Strategic and Budgetary Assessments. Russia has not only developed new, relatively low or low yield tactical nukes, but also routinely war game their use to stop both NATO and Chinese conventional forces should they overthrow Moscow's feeble post-Soviet military. Once again, that's not us. This is all the other people over there who are saying this. Coming from the Free Washington Beacon, Russia is moving tactical nuclear weapon systems into recently annexed Crimea, while the Obama administration is backing informal talks aimed at cutting U.S. tactical nuclear deployments in Europe. Three senior House Republican leaders wrote to President Obama two weeks ago warning that Moscow will deploy nuclear missiles and bombers armed with long-range air-launched cruise missiles into occupied Ukraine territory. So what we're saying is that this is possible. Okay? So it's something to keep your eye on. Things are starting to heat up in Ukraine. It's starting to kick off again, just like it did a year ago. Now they're saying there's only been 5,000, but we know there's been about 50,000 deaths in this war so far going on. Now another thing I did... I had some articles sent to me from people who were in Ukraine, and I used Google Translator to translate all the articles to see if I could find any kind of information that would be useful uh, that's something that we don't have already at this point that I've been able to find in any kind of English-speaking uh, websites or articles or anything like that. And I found one thing that was very interesting. A man interviewed a lady who was out there after the blast the next day, and it says, today I tried, and this is a lady in Ukraine, it says, today I tried all day to at least get a hold of someone from the neighborhood and find out if anyone was alive, but I was unable to because of the mobile communications did not exist in that area. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the footage I was talking about earlier. Like I said, this is a closer a view of the explosion on Sunday night. You get the exact same thing, except you see that actual, that ore, that huge bubble come out, and then you see it like mushroom out, and you hear the huge shockwave that comes and rolls through, and then just kind of goes to black. Oh, 